What up, what up, what up? Welcome back to Boston's Banter, where the sports are wicked and the banter is pisser. Yes, they I'm are. I'm Frank the Bank. With me, as always, Keith K. Lava La Cava. What's going on, Tony Bromo? Uh, we d- Wait a minute. Tony, Tony, Tony <laughs> Bromo? Man, last week I was Bromar Garcia Power. Now you got me as a cowboy, Frank? Come that's on, right, man. That's right. It's all good. How we doing, everybody? What's going on? What's going on? We had a busy, busy, busy week of sports. So why don't you get us started, Tony Bromo? All right, so <laughs> let's kick it over to Wicked Piss News. Tony Bromo. <laughs> The Tennessee Volunteers defeat the Texas A&M Aggies 6-5 in the College World Series Championship. Winner take all game, Frank. And this is the first time in history that they've won the championship in 127 years. Crazy. It was an unbelievable game. Crazy. It was a great game. Both teams had never won the College World Series. So we were going to get a first-time winner, which was really cool to watch. It was a great game. 6-5. to five. I mean, it was awesome. It was an awesome game. It was really good. They actually broke a curse as well, becoming the first number one seed since 1999, Miami the U, to actually win the national championship. So, curse is broken. Let's go. It was a great, it really was a great game. And moving on over to local NHL news, the Boston Bruins have traded goalie Linus Olmark to the Ottawa Senators. I was very surprised by this, Frank. What are are your thoughts on this? I mean, you can't play them both at the same time. I'm glad they got a pick back. They got some other, you know, prospects in the mix, but... At the end of the day, he was a great goalie for us. Uh, you know, I don't, we'll miss him, but I think Swayman obviously played it out of his mind. So I, you he know, did. he deserved to be on the team and be, be the number one. So. Well, the way I look at it, like Bruins GM Don Sweeney, clearly he saw he was expendable. Like you said, Swayman's there. He's been playing his heart. So I mean, obviously they're not going to play both goalies at the same time. That'd be cool, but it's not going to happen. But you know, in in return, the Bruins received forward Mark Kastelik, goalie Jonas Carpasalo, and a 2024 first round pick, 25th overall in that draft. Tonight, yeah, tonight. Isn't it, Frank? It, round one's tonight, starts tonight, so I'm glad we got back in the first round here. Yeah, so we'll see what happens like with the Bruins. Book. You know, good it's job, the off Sweeney. season, but uh, good luck to Olmark in, in Ottawa, and we'll see what happens. But that's not the only NHL news we got. This week, we had some other NHL news, Frank, and how about you break that down? I mean, game seven, Stanley, Stanley Cup. Cup. If that's you've been living right. under a rock and you missed this, like, this was crazy. This whole series was crazy. I mean, I got a lot to talk about with this, but it started off 3-0. For yeah, Panthers, were up, Panthers were up three to nothing. Yep. Oilers only scored four goals in the first three games. The wow. next three games, they scored 18 goals and tied the series up. So it was <laughs> 18. It was crazy. So it was, I was actually rooting for the Oilers just for history purposes. Same here. You know Same what I mean? here. Definitely. I have some of the stats. It's only been done once in history in the finals where a team has been down three to nothing mm-hmm. and came back and won. And it was the 1942. Maple Leafs. This is any major sport, mind you. So, in the finals. Now, it's happened in the ALCS and MLB. You know who that was. Boston Red Sox, baby. So, and it's never happened in the NBA. If a team has gone up any time in the playoffs, three games to none, not a single team has come back. It's 157 and zero. He's almost did it last year against Miami. Yep. And then in hockey, it's happened four times. 206 times. The, the three and O team won, and only four times did a team come back and win a series four being down three up. Times so, and but that was only once in the final. So it was only, the only other time it's ever happened. So just for that purpose, I wanted and to you see. Know, yeah, so that would have made that even win. better to see oh, that I would happen have loved again. To see it. Man, and you know? what the Panthers have done to the Bruins the yeah, last the two last years. Two we were up three one last year. We lost, and then they knocked us out this year. Mm-hmm. But it was good to see the Panthers get their first ever. First ever championship, so yes. So congratulations. Congratulations to them, of course. And also congratulations to Matthew Kachuk. Kachuk. Him and his buddy Jason yeah. Tatum, both from the same school in St. Louis. Chaminade College Preparatory yep. School in St. Louis. Man, they're celebrating. Two of their former students are champions in the same, same week. Same week. Unreal. Isn't that insane? And they were friends. Oh, yeah. There's, there's videos online of them talking about yep. they're going to be champions. and It's pretty cool to see. Two it. kids from St. Louis. You yeah. heard Kachuk say it at the end of the Stanley Cup game and then Tatum was saying it when he was walking out during before the parade Kachuk oh, finished it tonight and they both did so congratulations to both those guys and both those organizations well I'm happy to see Paul Maurice get his first as well I mean he's he's really funny I don't know if you ever heard any of his sound bites or post games I, I don't think I have actually. he's awesome but he's coached almost 2,000 games he's the he has the most wow. coaching uh, games without ever winning a Stanley Cup in NHL history. It's almost 2000, 19, 1980, yeah, 1985 is how many games he's coached without wow. winning a Stanley Cup until now. So this was long his first, overdue. yeah, so very much long really overdue. cool series. Another a really crazy stat. So during this season, the Oilers lost three games in a row a few times, but 
three of the times that they lost three games in a row, the next games they ran off huge winning streaks. So could it be done? This team was the team to do. Yeah, I was to gonna, win four. I in was going to say what, what what kind of streaks did they have going? So they lost three in a row back in November. Yep. From after that three and a little loss till December twelfth, they won eight straight games. Okay. The next one's even crazier. Later in December, lost three in a row. They won sixteen games in a row after losing after another three. After losing three, you know, yeah. So, so sixteen. Yeah, and then in February they won another. They lost three. They won five straight. So it's wow. it, they were a team to do it. They didn't do it, and it was just it was just one of those things. I mean, really cool. It, it almost looked like it was meant for them to do it with with those numbers. Uh, it right was there. unreal. Yeah. That, it, was, that's, it was a great game. And, wow. And I don't know if we talked about it, but this game had the highest TV rating of any. World Series game or NBA Finals game in the last five years. Wow. So this, That's this game seven had that much of a rating. Yep. So there was a lot of people that watched this. So it was really cool. Another, and a couple other things just to bring it up. I mean, Connor McDavid, you know, won the Conn Smythe for, you know, MVP of the postseason. He, he broke the record for Gretzky's assists. He had 34 assists. Playing his heart out, he man. Was, yeah, he was... This is only the second time a non-goalie has won the MVP for wow. the postseason. I didn't know in that NHL either. history. It's happened for goalies. I think it's six times total altogether. So two now. Now there's two people that were skaters versus goalies. Mm -hmm. So that was really cool. A, a Canadian team still has not won the Stanley Cup since 1993. So that wow, that's still old. going. So <laughs> go USA. It, it was a crazy, crazy, crazy series. It was it was fun to watch and. You know I love hockey. It's mm -hmm. a diehard hockey fan. It was it was really fun to watch. So moving over to some NBA news. So as we saw last week, you know the off season just started. We already saw a trade last week. We got another trade, everybody. And instead of calling them the New York Knicks, I think we should start calling them the Nova Knicks. I like that. I like that. The New York Knicks have acquired Mikhail Bridges from the Nets, putting him with three of his teammates from the 2016 Villanova roster. Now clearly. They're doing something over there in New York. They're trying to keep and stay contested with the Celtics. Obviously, those guys have a camaraderie. They got chemistry playing together in Villanova. Yeah, but absolutely. let me break down this trade because I think it was very silly, Frank. I got to break this down. <laughs> the Nets received Bojan Bogdanovic, four unprotected first-round picks, the Bucks protected first-round pick, a second-round pick, and also an unprotected pick swap with the Knicks. Wow. Very silly. Um, I like Mikhail Bridges, but... Um, he is good. I don't think... That <laughs> They Four gave unprotected. Up. They gave up a lot. Five first round picks. They gave all, up a lot. Together. They gave up, and you can, they have a lot of guys on their team that could start on other teams. You can't start them all, but they're going to have a very good second unit that comes off the bench. I mean, yeah, certainly. Like, they're pretty stacked up. I mean, they're trying to make a run now. I do think they have a lot of uh, similar style guys that aren't necessarily going to. They may not mesh great. Right. I mean, you got to have the right, you know, people out there of at the course. right time. So they might have a problem like trying to find the right lineups, you know what I mean? So, well, it, it's funny because right after this trade went down, they were all on FaceTime together, and they were all gassed up. Understandably so, they're all friends, and now they're all on the same thing. They've yep. been trying to get Mikhail Bridges to New York for a long time now. They're trying to contest with the Celtics. I don't think it's going to go too well, though, man. I think I, the C's are too high-powered. They're and, still stacked. We have the team to beat right. still, you know what I mean? But, like, but so. talk about a silly move, and didn't they just do something else They did silly? something even sillier, is that OG and Obi. I mean, two hundred and twelve million dollars. The guy averaged fourteen million. points a game. It's like, what are they gonna cha uh, pay Jalen Brunson ten billion dollars? Yeah. Like, I mean, what are they thinking? <laughs> Seriously. They're, I mean, I just don't understand how they're gonna keep all these guys. If they don't win in the next year or two, it's like it, this guy's on the you know signed up for five years. But I mean, forty something million dollars a year for a, for guy, a guy that gets fourteen million dollars. I now, mean, average fourteen points a game. I mean, like. Right, and I'm not taking anything away from him. He's Obviously, a good player. He, he is a good role player for sure, but in all my times and years of watching basketball, I know one highlight player him in 2020 bubble playoffs where he hit a buzzer beater against us. Yeah. I mean, he's he became the highest paid player in Knicks franchise history. Like, it's like... <laughs> Patrick Ewing. I mean, you can name a bunch of people, but I mean, like... Charles Oakley. Like, what are, are they going to pay Jalen Brunson? I mean, like, yeah, the kids, he's an animal. They, like, that's, that's... He's a guy that needs like, that kind of money. I mean, OG and Obi, that's insane to me. That's the guy they need to pay. But, I mean, again, it's it's. I think it was silly. Both moves there were a little far-fetched, in my opinion. Yeah. But moving on to more NBA news, the NBA draft just started, and the yeah. Celtics, I'll say, they definitely made some good picks. One of their draft picks, number 30 overall, was a forward from Creighton named Baylor Sherman. 
Now, this kid's interesting. So he's the only player in Division I men's history with 2,000 plus points, 1,000 plus rebounds, 500 plus assists, and 300 plus three-pointers. Very versatile. And I think he could come in and provide a spark off the bench like right away. Not like these other guys we've drafted in the past. J.D. Davidson, you know, he doesn't see much minutes. I think Jordan Walsh is on his way to getting minutes, but I think this kid could come right in, and he's he's got surefire skill, according to the analyst, Frank. Yeah, he's a good shooter. I mean, I think where he might find some difficulty is defense. That's been a lot of mm -hmm. talk about his defense. I know that, obviously, Brad Stevens has a connection to Creighton and all that, but, yep. uh, you know, to me, it's a good. he's a good shooter. I don't know if the defense is going to translate. So he needs to work on that. I think Certainly. that's what I've read anyway and what I've heard you know, from different people. So, um, yeah, I think that's... Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, for the most part, last season, he averaged about 18 points a game, nine rebounds, nearly four assists. And, yeah. and I'll be honest, he shot a pretty impressive 38% from three last year. We're a, we love to shoot the three, yeah, so that's it fits into the, the shooting aspect. I mean, we Certainly. have guys that are going to move on and get paid from other teams at right. some point. So it's like to, to put him in and take a, you know, a three-pointing spot from somebody else that might move on, then that's right. that's probably one of the reasons why they did it. And again, Brad Stevens having that connection. connection you know what I mean? So, And I'm excited. <laughs> I'm honestly excited to see what this kid can do. And then for their second round pick, we took a forward out of Gonzaga named Anton Watson, standing at 6'8". I don't really see him, you know, providing much for us right away. Maybe he's going to be going to the main, you know, the main affiliate. I mean, I'm Let me pass it on over to you, Frank, with more NBA draft stuff. What do you got for me? I mean... This year's draft was really interesting. There wasn't the, the big talk was that there wasn't a lot of there wasn't one person that just overwhelmingly was going to be like number one. Like, yeah, like I mean, last year, that. Victor Wembanyama oh, oh, was the guy. Of like, course, you knew you knew the second he said he was eligible. You know what I mean? That right. was coming out rather. Um, so there was a lot of parity in the draft, which mm -hmm. was a lot of talk about this. There was six lottery picks that had no college experience at all. So that tied the record. Wow. So that that's pretty cool to see as well. A lot of guys could have went, you know, in the top 10 or even the top five. There's a lot of talk about top five talent, top 10 talent. So there was a lot of that going on. I mean, I put in <laughs> I put in a few bets, which I hit one um, for people to go at like exact spots. So I actually there was one guy and, and talking to a friend of mine that's that's big into the AAU basketball scene. Uh, my buddy Craig, who's watching, I'm sure he uh, he's going to come on the show one of these days, too. Looking it's forward great. to he's, it. He's really smart and really knows basketball. He's a coach and or was a coach and still involved with the AAU program. Yep. Great dude. Um, he talked about a few guys that, you know, he knew he knows uh, just from the AAU stuff. And I'll talk about them now. But before he even told me about it, uh, Donovan Klingen, who's going to be blinging in my <laughs> I put him in at plus 2,000 to go second overall. Wow. And so 10 bucks to win 200. I was like, you know what? Why not? He, why not? He To me... He went to, he fell to seven. I mean, a lot of people, analysts had him in the top five. Okay. So Who he took him he, the Trailblazers. Trailblazers yep, did, yep. So right. he is like an old school, like, I like to just say old school center. Like, he just, like, you come in the paint, you can expect he's going to be in your face. Like, the he is strong. Great. He is very good defender. Yep. He's a rim protector. This kid's going to, that was a great pick by Trailblazers, I thought, getting him at seven. Um, you know, from UConn, great guy. He played he played some AAU ball in Boston. That's you know like what Craig was talking about, how he knew him. I just thought he was. Yeah, I thought that was a great pick for them. Um, well, they great, need the help over yeah, there too. Yeah, <laughs> rim protector. Like that's what you want. Yeah, certainly. Um, Mattis Buzelis, this kid again. Craig actually coached him one year in, that's, in that's AAU. Really yeah, cool. it was. He's this kid. <laughs> this kid's awesome. Top five talent. Um, he went to his home town chicago which is really cool he went at 11 and again they a lot of people had him anywhere from five to ten so he fell a little bit back too i thought that was a great pick from chicago again hometown his family his both his grandfathers played professionally overseas his mother and his father played professionally. family of athletes so they all have played pr played professionally which is great and I don't know if you saw when he got drafted what he said in his post game interview. I, I mean, did his not. Post draft interview. I did not see that. <laughs> he was obviously thanking his supporters, but what I loved was that he he thanked his doubters. Seems like he's definitely motivated. Like you said, if he's thanking his doubters, obviously he's been counted out more than once in his life. <clears throat> There's a lot of other stuff I got, like the Spurs. Okay, so Stefan Castle, UConn. I had him possibly going number one. Also, he went at four. That was a Amazing pick. Him and Victor him, women Yammer. Uh, Victor Deadly and him, duo. yeah, pumped, right? But yep. then they had the eighth pick. So they had a real opportunity. They had the fourth and the eighth pick this year. 
they had a really good opportunity to put something together with Victor, right? Mm -hmm. They draft Dillingham from Kentucky. Kid's an animal. Great ball handler. Kid can create his own shots, right? Yep. They trade him to Minnesota for a 2030 and 2031 yeah, pick. So I saw that. Four that and was five silly. years from now. I mean, what, are, they, are they like recruiting like 14 year olds? Like, they, like what are they doing? <laughs> right, the YMCA. Like, well, well, you guys had a real opportunity. Real good opportunity to do something and, and build a really good team with the fourth and eighth pick. And both the guys they chose were were great. Right. You know what I mean? So if you didn't like the eighth pick in Dillingham or whoever, you, you didn't like anybody, why not trade back? Pick up another pick or two this year in something in the future for somebody that did want Five that. Years I mean, from now. Not, yeah, I couldn't believe they did that. It was like almost unbelievable. That, that's that they that's did that. interesting too. I mean, yeah. that that GM, I'm sure the owner of the team's wondering why he did that. <laughs> I just couldn't believe it. I really couldn't. Um, the other the other pick that I really liked was, and a lot of people were talking about it, was Dalton Connect at 17 to the Lakers. He okay. uh, yeah, six games one. this past year with 35 or more points. Okay, that was the most in Division One. Okay, wow. so that's how, yeah, yeah, and he uh, he had the that's high as the franchise record for a Tennessee player, or actually is the record for a franchise uh, for a Tennessee player. So I thought that was a steal. He again, they were saying nine, ten, eleven, maybe he'd go there. Mm -hmm. So for the Lakers to get him, and and lastly the <laughs> the other Lakers pick. If you oh, saw, oh, every we, yeah, we, I could have told you this two years ago. Man. Everybody knew this was coming. I mean, it was it's obviously you know pre-planned i feel like some of this but he finessed uh, that whole organization to have his son go there just oh, we yeah. all know in the betting so we're talking about ronnie obviously the betting sites had it at 54 and a half was his average draft pick so lakers are sitting at 55 so you obviously if you you should have took the over right um lakers of course got ronnie LeBron, for years, has been saying, I want to play with my son. Huge advocate for that, man. So this is the first active duo in the NBA history to be playing together. They're both going to be active. They will both be on the floor together. Um, that is pretty cool. It, I, it's I, neat. I think it's great. So a lot of people, though, are throwing some kind of negative comments towards that. Like I just said, even you know, LeBron may have finessed the organization to get his son there. But again, he's LeBron James. But if we're going to be giving Bronny and LeBron James, you know, we're going to be making fun of them and you know throwing I, our shots. I, I think it's great. I'm going to be honest with you, though. We should be making fun of Giannis and Thanasis because Thanasis is only there because of a package deal. Let's face it. What does he do for the Bucks? There, there's a lot of them talk about that. Boogers out of yeah. nose. He don't. He... Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he does. A lot of people were talking about the same thing. So I mean, if it were me and I was a GM, and again, this doesn't necessarily have to be the Lakers. I would have took a shot at Bronny just to get LeBron. Right. Okay. Anybody or hold the or like they said, hold I, the pick the, hostage. The Celtics could have picked him. Like anybody. Exactly. Like anybody could have. Imagine that. Like, but it, you know, there's been a lot of talk that LeBron already had signed his deal and they already mm -hmm. kind of knew. And you know, it, it, it does happen that way where it's like, you know, the, well, even the agents if, calling everybody. Right. Like, Don't pick our pick. Don't e pick e our even guy. Even if LeBron didn't sign that deal yet, them just doing that, he's he's back with LA. He's he's retiring oh, yeah. a Laker. Man. Yeah. It's. I think it's really cool that they did it. I mean, what father? wouldn't want to play professional or even like when my son gets older if i play softball with him like you know be cool. anything just even play in basketball right with him. like you know i love coaching him like why wouldn't i love to play with right him? no you know so, I mean, that's really cool for de lebron definitely and, congrats to the james family I on that it. that is pretty cool and you know what's even crazier his his second son bryce is only Two, two years, years away from being eligible, be playing and with he's both actually sons. even a better prospect. Yeah, he's six six, and Bronny stands at six two. <laughs> this so, can you imagine what, LeBron forever? I guess like he's just gonna yeah. be in the league till <laughs> till he's fifty years old, and right. he'll play with both his sons. So right, imagine that you were right he'll, about he'll that. He'll have though. a starting five out there. <laughs> well, LeBron all, James all, all, yeah, and, the, and then the daughter will be the cheerleader. <laughs> the daughter, yeah, there you go. <laughs> or she could play too. That'd be so. Be uh, who knows, uh, man? But congratulations to the James family really cool, and all those yeah. draft prospects. So that we'll see how they do next year yep uh moving on we are going to jump into the foxborough focus we got a little bit of ota stuff to talk about not a lot here but you know we got to definitely do some updates with that so why don't you get it started keep so patriots otas as we know we're we're slowly we're getting towards training camp and preseason coming up within a month and a half so so far in otas we've been seeing a lot of things obviously we all expect jacoby Brissett to be the starting quarterback for the patriots now under him obviously first round pick drake may bailey zappi and then also another rookie in joe millen now Jacoby Brissett's been taking the first team reps. We've all expected that. But Drake May has been seeing an increased reps over Zappi, even getting some over Jacoby. I guess they're trying to see him with the first yeah, team offense to, and everything. 
And then another news I heard going into the OTAs is that Juju is starting to show some flashes. Now, last year, let's face it, last year was a really bad year for him. He had 29 catches, 260 yards, and one touchdown. Yeah, that's terrible. To the year before when he was with Kansas City, get it, Patrick Mahomes is his quarterback, yeah, obviously. 78 catches, 933 yards, and three touchdowns. So getting him last year, obviously losing Jacoby Myers, we thought he would have provided a spark. He didn't. But going into this OTAs, I'm hearing he's starting to show some flashes. But Frank, the only issue with that is, will he make the team with all the receivers they have? He got to pay. I mean, he already paid them, I thought. So no, he, they did. But I've been hearing, though, he could be the him. odd man out. I heard him and Tyquan Thornton could be the two odd men out on the wide receiver depth chart. Because let's face it, other than them, Kendrick Bourne. Pop Douglas, KJ Osborne, the two rookies, and Jalen Polk and Javon Baker. Yeah, that's true. And then you also have Jalen Rager, who we forget at the end of last season, they've been using him at kick yeah. return. He returned a kick against the Bills for a yeah. touchdown. And then um, Kayshawn Butte, who he had his little issue in the beginning of the offseason with the betting scandal, you know, when he was at LSU. Yeah, 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 yeah. They've been looking past that, and I guess he's been looking really good in OTA, so who knows if he could even make the jump and show, show up yeah. for us next season. There's gonna We have a lot of... I don't know. I wouldn't say we don't have a star really, but we have. Well, Pop Douglas. I like. I like Demario. I think Demario is really good. We have a lot uh, of role players. But we had a lot of like above average guys. So it's just like almost like the Knicks, where you got to figure out which guys fit right. Right. You know what I mean? Right. So, yeah. It's, I'll, I'll be honest. Though, I, I don't see Juju making the team. That's my opinion. If they can, yeah. Well, if they can save any any cap hit, then yeah, why not? Right. And so, then with all those other guys, I mean, am I hoping he doesn't? No. I'd like to see him back on the team. That's more depth for us. He's a veteran. Yeah, but at the same yeah. time, with all these other guys, and if he is starting to show some flashes easily, I think he could. But I'll be honest with those other guys, like I just named, I don't see him making the team. No, so we, we will see what happens during that preseason. Makes sense. And then we got some guys that are struggling in OTAs as of right now. Um, we, I mentioned his name earlier, Bailey Zappi. He seems like he's the obvious quarterback out with all the other guys they have there. You know, yeah. Drake May, uh, Kobe Brissett, Joe Milton. I, I don't see them keeping Zappi, and I heard he's been even having his struggles in camp. Hmm. KJ Osborne, who we recently signed from the Vikings this past this offseason. I guess he really hasn't shown much impact. He's still learning the playbook and everything. I've heard he's kind of been dealing with some drops, and they've even had him as the Z. You know, that's the yeah. leading receiver in the offense. Yep. He, he really hasn't been getting open, I guess. But again, it's OTAs, so we'll see what happens. But that's just what I'm reading. And then Tyquan Thornton, and he's had injuries upon injuries. The guy's fast. The guy he's very fast. The guy showcases really good speed. His problem is... Not the best hands, and he just can't stay can't healthy. Stay on the field. So if yeah. I had to predict two receivers off that board, I'd say Juju and Taekwon might not make the roster. What do you got for us from OTAs, Frank? All right, Keon White's been a big talk from Mayo. I mean, Keon White, the he, edge rusher, man, I is, like him. This is second year. He was our second round pick last year. Yep. Um, a lot of praise from the head coach. One of the things that you know that I've hearing a lot of is the offensive line. A lot of, a mm -hmm. lot of uh, woes there, and like issues trying to figure out, you know where they want people and it's I, i've heard a lot about that yep um i also one of the things i read too is that and it's going to be a tough year for the patriots again what we talked about uh, last time was <laughs> they have one of the toughest schedules in the league they one, do they do have but a really they tough schedule. they also from a betting site standpoint they are not favored in a single game this year they are the dog in every single game from a betting standpoint. Wow. So if you think they're going to win six or seven like we talked about. I still do. You you might want to put the money on them because the, you're going to be getting plus money. Hey, man, we'll go to Fox Foods, man. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> FanDuel it No, up. but you're right about that offensive line, though, Frank. I mean, they they definitely were struggling last year, but going into this offseason as well, they re-signed Michael Onwenu like we talked about yeah. in the first episode, but he's dealing with injuries. Cole Strange potentially could be missing the majority of the season. Ugh. Mind you, I always say... I think we kind of wasted a first round pick on him. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people said that was a stretch at that spot. The, anyway. the Rams saw our pick and they made fun of us. Yeah. Because they thought they could have caught him in day two. That's a lot of people thought that. Yeah, yeah man. I, I remember that. So, I mean, Edelman attended OTAs uh, for a day or two and uh, he spoke on what he saw. He saw a lot of great communication, they said, which was good on defense. In particular, we already know our defense is going to be oh, real man. good. The defense is so, going to be the staple of our team. I feel like they're going to be tied out by the end of the year, though, because I feel yeah. like the offense is. He said that he, he Jacoby looked like he was like confident and calling plays well, but still, he, he, he said some st other stuff, too, that was just like, you know, look good, but a lot of work to a do still. A lot of work, um, and, and they all know defense, that. Defense, he really was like, 
you know, they were flying around. Well, they were like you yeah. said it, man. They're like they're, they're going to be gassed and winded. But a lot of those games last year where we were stopping teams, stopping teams, stopping teams. I mean, how much more can they do when the offense is getting consistent three and outs? Oh yeah, no, that's what that's what I mean. So, so. let's let's hope that after the OTAs we get into training camp and things just start to flourish and we'll see how the preseason goes. Because I am, I don't care if they're not favored in every game, Frank. I am excited for the season like every year. But let's move on to the lava round. We're, this week we're gonna kind of do our predictions on who we think is going to be NFL leaders in, in categories. So I'd like to start off with like the most passing yards. And I think we talked a little bit about this uh, before, but I, similar guy I think we had on this one. We might have the same guy. I'm not sure. But I like CJ Stroud a lot this year. Same he, here. Oh, you do? Yes, so that's sir. your guy too. So he's kind of a dark horse obviously too, but they just got digs. They have a ton of receivers. I mean, they, their team is stacked. He was eighth in the league in passing yards last year as a rookie yep. without digs. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's my guy. And what do you have on him? So, like you were saying, eighth in the league last year, and that was without digs, but really just Nico Collins, Tank Dell, Dalton Schultz. And Dell missed some time, too. Yeah, he did, exactly. Uh, he had 4,108 passing yards, 23 touchdowns, and five interceptions. But here's where it gets interesting with those five interceptions. He threw three in one game, in one game against yeah. the Cardinals. He started his first Very like efficient wasn't passer. his first like six or eight games he didn't throw an interception or even zero one. interceptions. It was like a zero crazy for a rookie. He's very smart with the ball. Yeah, he's a very efficient passer, and a lot of people really think he should have went number one over Bryce Young. I mean, looking back, I'm yes, sure, I'm sure they, Carolina wished they did that. Oh, I, I saw a picture of a, of a Panthers fan at the draft, and they had a Panthers jersey on. On the back, it said Stroud, not Young. Oh, no. <laughs> He's hurting. That's crazy. What do you got for receiving yards? Receiving yards. I think this one's pretty easy. I'm going to go with Tyreek Hill. Oh, my God. We're two for two. Two for That's two. exactly. I mean, I didn't even write nothing about that. Great minds think alike. <laughs> so, yeah, I've... <laughs> Tyreek Hill, he's just, he's a baller. I mean, he's 200 yards a game. At, you know, he just, it doesn't even matter. He just throws it up. He catches right. it. He's just ridiculous. Well, two, two years in Miami, Frank, he's posted over 1,700 receiving yards. The guy is filthy nasty. He is so fast. I'd be watching games, even if I'm, the Patriots aren't playing the Dolphins, you know, on the bottom ticker, they got the stats yeah. and everything. Yeah. You'll see him start at 100 yards. 140 yards, 180 yards. And by the fourth quarter, the guy's got 200 consistently. It's just unbelievable, yeah. He's and and then, just... then you'll see the thing, oh, Tyreek Hill broke open for another touchdown, so I definitely see him leading the league he in receiving yards He didn't lead the league in year. receptions last year. It was CeeDee Lamb, but he led the league in, in receiving, receiving yards. yards. Yeah. So he had so 16 I, last catches. Bro. Yep, he was he was, was number pretty, one last year. Yeah. And he, he had 119 receptions, which is tied for second. It was like, yeah, tied for second. Yep. So, uh, what about rushing yards? Rushing yards, Frank. Uh, pretty interesting running back here. He actually blew up last year. I'm going with Kyron Williams. Okay, okay. Now, Kyron Williams, his first year in the league, he only had 35 attempts for 139 yards. The Rams didn't use him at all, but they also still had Cam Akers and a few other guys there. Now, going into this year where he kind of boosted his way up to the top of the depth chart, yeah. he posted 1,144 rushing yards and 12 touchdowns. Now, going into this team, the Rams, Matthew Stafford is not getting any younger. No. Now, I'm not saying he, he's not going to be able to throw the ball around with those weapons they have. You know, Cooper Cup, Puka Nakua, and all those guys. Yeah. Demarcus Robinson's even slept on. Yeah, but I yeah. really I really do feel that they are going to be using Kyron Williams a lot to give Matthew Stafford a break. Yeah, that makes sense to me. I like Kyron. I said it yeah. a couple episodes ago that he's so really good. I, I think he's going to be definitely leading the league. And, and last year, he was third in rushing yards yeah. behind CMC and only Derrick Henry. Yeah, CMC, obviously, you know, if he stays healthy, I mean, if they if San Fran's smart and if they can keep their backup health healthy, then you know let him rest a little bit. If they, they right. I feel like they're gonna run away with some games anyway. But I have I have Henry or which I really like the narrative on Barkley Saquon. So DeAndre Swift was fifth in the league last year in Philadelphia. I was gonna say yeah, I mean, yeah. Swift's good, but he is not Saquon Barkley. No, I mean Saquon Barkley on that team. He definitely I could see him leading the league in rushing yards. I really could. I Derek could Henry, too. like you said, was second. Baltimore runs the ball more than anybody. Like so, I mean, they made Gus Edwards look like a star. They made uh, J.K. Dobbins when he was healthy. He, you know, it's right. unbelievable what they can do with their their scheme, their run scheme. Mm -hmm. So Derrick Henry could. I think he's not getting any younger, kind of like the Stafford comment. But I think what takes away from him is just Lamar Jackson. Lamar is going to get his too. Don't yeah. get me wrong. But I mean, you, you, there's games where you're looking at guys like, well, who is this? Why is he getting this many yards? So I agree with you on the Saquon Barkley. Saquon one, is who I really kind of like as right. the, you know, my guy that if CMC, 
you know, doesn't play as much. I mean, CMC is the he's, one he's of the a best. Dog. He's on the cover the of the new Madden coming out. So he's, he's a dog. Animal. We all know that. But like you just said it, seeing what Saquon did with that horrible New York Giants offensive yeah. line, and now he's with Philly where they got some studs on that. I mean, Jason, yeah. Kel Jason Kelsey retired. He retired but, but he, I could see that, Frank. And I, I think I, that's I like, a good I one, like too. That. As, as long as he can stay healthy. He's had some injury oh, concerns. So that's, you know, pretty good. What do you got for receptions? Receptions, I'm going to go with Amon Ross St. Brown of the tr Detroit Lions. Now, that. last year he had 119 receptions and he was tied with Tyreek Hill for receptions, second in the league behind CeeDee Lamb. Now, each year, Frank, he's gotten consistently better. Literally every year. His rookie year, he posted 90 receptions, 912 yards, five touchdowns. 2022, 106 receptions, 1,161 yards, six touchdowns. And then last year, like I just said, 119 receptions, 1,515 yards in 10 touchdowns. Wow. He's getting better. And I just see him on that Lions offense getting all the targets. I, I like him, it. Jameson Williams, and Sam Laporta. But let's face it, seeing those numbers there going down the line as he has oh, he's progressing he's... in the NFL, all he's doing is getting better. I don't see any slowing down from him. He's an animal. He's an absolute animal. Absolutely. I got kind of a dark horse candidate here, too. So Can't wait to hear it. Garrett Wilson. I like that. Okay, with Aaron Rodgers. Again, if yep. Aaron Rodgers stays healthy, which, you know, he has been healthy for most of his career yep. until last year. Um, he had 95 catches last year, Garrett Wilson did, with, you know, you throwing him the ball, me throwing him the ball. I mean, like, they, they were grabbing people out of the stands to let the, you know, throw this guy the ball. They had a guy named catches. Boyle out there. Yeah, they had, uh, you know what I mean, guys you can't even name. Like, so it's literally crazy. He was, so that tied him for 15th in the league. Yeah, that's with, impressive. So, I mean, with Rodgers, I mean, how much is that number going to go up? It should go up a lot. I you agree. Know what I mean? So he's kind of my dark horse there. I mean, obviously CD's going to get his, Amon's going to get his. I mean, there's, there's plenty of guys. It really, you know, Tyreek's going to get a bunch of catches. So, I mean, it's... Absolutely. You know, but that, I like Garrett Wilson this year to, to make a bigger step. You know, again, 95 catches with guys he, you well, can't even and, name. And again, Zach it, Wilson. Right, right, of course. Tim Boyle. Yeah. <laughs> but in that offense, Frank, it, it makes sense for him to potentially be the receptions leader because behind him is Mike Williams. And let's face it, Mike Williams is a physical receiver, but he's not going to be eating up no. all the targets, man. And remember what Devontae did with, with Aaron Rodgers for all those years. I mean, right. That that could be that. And, and Garrett Wilson is a great route runner. He's wicked young quick. Too, I mean, he's man. young, too, man. He's so, got so much potential. And I am I think the Jets are going to have a good season mm -hmm. overall. I really do. I, I hate to say that. You I know, do, I, too. I, I can't it, it stand saying that. Yeah, you, I, say that. you know it's true, though. <laughs> I mean, uh, And actually, moving on to uh, the Sacks leader, I actually have another Jet who was on Philly last year, Hassan Reddick, as oh, okay. a possible, again, he was 15th in the league last year. I think yep. he missed a game or two. Um, but now with Rodgers, if, if if the Jets are playing from ahead, which I expect them to you know, more often than not, that's when you see a lot more sacks. When, when you know a team's going to throw, you just let the guys lose. Oh, yeah. So Hassan loose. Reddick has, has all the ability to do that. And again, this is if he doesn't hold out, which you know there was some talk about that. I don't know if that's still a thing, but... You know, he, this kid's got some talent. He, I, you know, he's kind of my dark horse for that. I mean, obviously, TJ Watt, animal. He's going to get his always. So. Man, you just named my person. Oh, well, TJ Watt, everybody. <laughs> That's who I'm taking as the league leader in sacks next year. In 2023, he had 19 sacks and one interception. I know that's not, we're not talking about that well, right still. now. That's pretty impressive for a pass kid's, rusher. This kid's an animal. First in sacks last year. Now, here's a bold prediction, everybody. I'm actually predicting TJ Watt to break the sack record this year. Nice. Now, the sack record is 22 and a half by Michael Strahan, but people forget in 2021, TJ Watt tied that record. Uh, and man. I could see him potentially breaking the sack record this year. Again, 23, 24, Frank. That'd be awesome. That'd yep. be uh, what do you got for interceptions leader? We got a Patriot on this one, Frank, really? and I'm taking Christian Gonzalez. Now, I'm sure they're going to be some people that are saying, what? <laughs> Thank you, Frank. <laughs> so Christian Gonzalez, rookie last year out of Oregon. You know, very lengthy, good corner with some speed. He missed majority of the season after playing four games due to a torn labrum. Now, the reason I'm picking him to be the potential interception leader next year, his first month in the league being a rookie, and obviously translating from college to that on a, as a defensive guy can be very difficult, mm -hmm. but his first official month in the league, he posted an interception, a sack, numerous tackles, a bunch of pass breakups. Now, those receivers that he played against in those first four games were not bums. He played against the likes of A.J. Brown, mm -hmm. Devontae mm -hmm. Smith, Jalen Waddell, Tyreek Hill, who he held catchless and picked him off, and Garrett Wilson. 
all those guys he held to under 50 yards. Now, those guys may have had more yards in that game, but I'm talking primarily when he was covering them. Right. He held A.J. Brown to four catches for 47 yards, Devontae Smith to two for 22. Mm-hmm. Like I said, Tyreek Hill caught no passes, and he picked off a pass on him. Yep. Jalen Waddle had one for 15, and Garrett Wilson had three for 18. He even garnered praise from the guy I'm picking to be the receiving leader, and you as well, in Tyreek Hill. Tyreek Hill called him a really good rookie. Like I said, very lengthy with some good speed. He's like, they got some good pieces over there in New England, and he thinks that that dude is really going to be a good piece of our defense. Oh, yeah, he is. Our defense is is stacked. I think Christian Gonzalez sailing is all the way up here, man. So I had Traverius Ward. Uh, I think they're going to be playing, you know, from ahead a lot. Again, mm-hmm. just talking about San Fran again. This kid was fourth in the league last year for, for interceptions. He's gonna, he's gonna provide a spark. I love it. And that's all we got for tonight. <laughs> what? What? You gotta be quiet, man. Why? It's June twenty eighth. Yeah. A quiet place day one is now in theaters. I don't care about that. From Titletown to your town, thanks for tuning in, guys. Stay wicked, pissa. From Foxborough to your borough, thanks for listening. Frank, run.